crucified my Lord. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And, on, and very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large. It had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to no one, for they were afraid. This is the good news. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I invite you to stand and sing.
Good morning. A very happy Easter Sunday to you. My name is Jeff Rock, the coordinating minister. And I'm Kathy Merchant, the minister of community life. Along with Tam Award, our minister of children, youth, and families, our amazing music team and choir under the direction of Jay Esplana, Esplana and the awesome Andrew McCord and his tech team in the back. We are so excited to welcome you all this Easter Sunday morning. Before we get started, we just want to acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional, ancestral, unceded territories of the First Nations people. So all of us here in this room are on the land of the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish nations. I know many of you are joining us online, and you might be on the land of other nations. So if you'd like, please feel free to write those nation names in the chat now. And I have some good news today. I just found out, I guess two days ago, that the Catholic Church has announced that they're going to sign a sacred covenant uh, with the First Nations in Kamloops, from the Tekamloops to Sechwapum uh, First Nation. That's the nation in Kamloops, where if you remember three years ago, they discovered 215 bodies, the unmarked graves of the children, at the residential school there. So today, on Easter Sunday, the Catholic Church has announced an agreement with them, both as an apology and also to work towards discovering what happened at that residential school and others, so that all the children who were lost uh, can be honored in the right way and in a good way. And I just... And I just wanted to lift up that the United Church, uh, we had 15 for, uh, residential schools all across Canada, five of which were here in BC. So if we also see, especially on this Easter, what we can do to try to help heal the world and heal our relationships with one another and with First Nations and with the land. Thank you. So whoever you are, however you've arrived here, whomever you love, know that you are welcome here. We do have a children and youth program, which happens in the Center for Peace. After the young people have come up here for a little moment together, they're welcome to proceed to the Center for Peace or back to the pews with the people that they came with. As always, you're welcome to participate as much or as little in today's service as you would like. If you want, you can stand up and dance. I think you might want to do that during our next uh, song when the choir is singing. Or you can uh, just remain seated and let the music wash over you. I also want to take a moment and acknowledge that today, March 31st, is what's known as International Trans Day of Visibility, as we honor the success and inclusion of trans and non-binary people in our world and in our society. And it's kind of cool that transformation comes uh, Trans Day of Remembrance, or of, of visibility every once in a while on Easter Sunday, right? As people put death to the old and resurrection and new life and a new name to themselves. So we celebrate Woo! that day as well. On that note, I invite you to rise as you're able, greet one another, and if you have flowers and you want to come and decorate the, the tree, we have got lots of extra flowers. We will take as much time as it takes for all of you to come and help us decorate our cross into a sign of resurrection. So greet one another with a hand of friendship. Come decorate the tree.
Almighty. Take a deep breath. Take another one. In fact, keep breathing. Do you smell that? I can smell a little hyacinth, some uh, forsythia, daffodils and tulips, freesia, the sacred sense of love floating through the air. And so let us pray. God of new beginnings, God of unconditional love, God of resurrection promise, God of growing hope, God of evolving understanding, God made known in Jesus, God of the spirit power, God of many names. We gather this Easter Sunday to celebrate that love is stronger than death, that peace is stronger than war, that hope is stronger than hate, and love always wins. Say it with me. Love always wins. Love always wins. Love always wins. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I invite forward our young people for our learning together, and they're going to sing for us, in fact. And even if you don't know the songs, any young people are welcome forward. We're going to do this all together. Come on up. Is this working? Is it? Yeah. Testing. Okay, good. It is. Testing. Testing. Right. All right. Sweet. Okay. And this one also? Okay. Just thought I'd check first. Okay, hi everyone. So we've been practicing this for a while now. Um, this is a round that we're doing, and there's three parts to it. So I'm going to be doing the third part. I think Fen is taking the first part, and these two are going to take the second part. So um, we're going to start by all singing the first part. Um, and you guys can join in once you get the hang of it. We'll do it twice through. It's pretty simple. Then we're all going to do the second part. And then we'll do the big thing, because um, the third part is really high, and I don't want to make anyone try it. <laughs> okay, so this is the first part. Oh, be joyful, oh, be jubilant, cast your sorrows far away. Come rejoice and sing together this happy day. Oh, be joyful, oh, be jubilant, cast your sorrows far away. Come rejoice and sing together this happy day. Awesome. Okay, so now the second part goes like this. Oh, be joyful. Oh, be joyful on this day. Let's try that all together. Oh, be joyful. Awesome. I don't know why the microphone freaked out there. <laughs> okay, so you can choose whichever part you want to take. If you don't want to sing, that's cool too. And you can take the first part or the second part, and these guys are going to be singing with me, and we're going to try it all together. And if this goes horribly wrong, we're going to forget it happened and try again. <laughs> all right. One, two, three. Oh, be joyful. Be joyful. Oh, be joyful. Oh, be joyful. Cast your sorrow. Okay, that didn't go horribly wrong. Let's try it again. Two, three. Oh, be joyful. Oh, be joyful. Oh, be joyful. Oh, be joyful. Cast your sorrows away. I think that sounded really good. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Thank you, guys. Awesome. <laughs> So I'd like to uh, welcome any children who are with us today, even if you're just visiting. Uh, your grown-ups are welcome to come with us. We're going to do our own little Easter festival over at the Center of Peace, which 
which is across the alley here for any grown-ups looking for your young ones after the service. It's in the, um, the building kitty corner to us, and you'll find us at the uh, bottom floor of the Center for Peace. So all children are welcome of all ages. See you guys a little later. So during the season of Lent, we've been doing something a little bit different around here at Canadian Memorial. We've been doing a prayer of confession every week. And we do a prayer of confession not because we think we're terrible people, but to help us let go of all the things. I don't have my microphone. Oh, no, I do. To let go of all the things that might be holding us back. And our uh, prayer is responsive. Your line is, forgive us, we pray. As the young ones go out, I'll try and command your attention. It's really hard to do <laughs> when this is what I have to compete with. Let us pray. Loving God, you created the world as a place of balance with night and day, land and water, earth and sky. And you created us for balance and invite us to be centered in your love in the here and the now. But so often the world and our lives become unbalanced. Creator God, you know us through and through, our strengths and our weaknesses, our triumphs and our challenges, our faults and our foibles. When we make mistakes, forgive us, we pray. Loving God, you remind us time and time again that we are unconditionally loved by you. We're told that in your scripture stories, in the life of Jesus, in the coming together in this community of faith. And so when we forget your love for us, Forgive us, we pray. Sustaining God, you love all creation, every living thing, every plant, every creature, every single life, not just ourselves, but others, our friends, our family, and even our foes. And so for the times we failed to love as you love, forgive us, we pray. Friends, the good news is this. God is constantly saying, behold, I make all things new, including each and every one of you. And you are unconditionally loved by your creator. You are lovable. You are worthy of love. And there is nothing you can do to take that love away. So you are forgiven as many times as it takes. With each new rising dawn, it is a new day and a new beginning and a new life. Know that you dwell in that love this day and always. May it hold you, may that love guide you, and may that love heal you. Amen.
Wasn't that a great uh, song? Thank you, choir and Jay. Our Easter Sunday reading is from the Gospel of John. It tells the resurrection story of Jesus appearing to his disciples after first appearing to the women at the tomb. Now, I've said before that John was more of a poet than an historian. He was the youngest of the 12 disciples, and he was an old man when he wrote the gospel. So he'd forgotten a lot of things. And he wasn't a detailed man. So please don't get tied up in the details of the story. Sit back, relax and try to get the messages that the poet is trying to convey. From John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After that, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the God has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the witness of our brother John. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brian. A great tie. Please join with me in a moment of prayer. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, and indeed the actions of our lives always be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So last week on Palm Sunday during the sermon time, we reflected on the radical nonviolence of Jesus and his invitation to a third way of peace. How Jesus and his followers had this triumphant entry into Jerusalem that was an inherently political act that threatened those in positions of power. How religion does not belong in politics. 
but politics belongs in religion because we as faith community are the body politic. We are the people. Well, a lot has happened since then. Because the next day, we received a call asking us, hot on the heels from our last interfaith iftar event, if our Center for Peace could hold another one on Wednesday, 48 hours after receiving this phone call. Because if we did, the Prime Minister would show up. Remember, religion doesn't belong in politics. But politics belongs in religion. Now, I know many of you would have loved to attend, if not for the PM, then for the uh, important interfaith work. But it was a highly controlled uh, crowd, and we could only invite six congregants. And there was probably about 50 security guards and um, personnel, RCMP, VPD, Secret Services. Uh, and I especially want to say a huge thank you to Kathy Merchant for whose hard work made all of this possible and for the folks at the Al Masjid Al Jamia Mosque for partnering with us in this endeavor and the incredible crew of people that stayed very late and washed the many, many dishes. Now, last Sunday, I finished my sermon with a quote from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and I promised that I would start my sermon this Sunday with the same quote. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Now, last week I was talking about the civil rights movement and the late Jack O'Dell, who was a member of this congregation and Reverend Dr. King's closest aide and, and advisor and his wife, the late Jane Power. And this week I'm sharing that quote again, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And I'm sharing it again this week because, well, I don't know about you, but I need a little bit of hope right now. I found myself more despondent lately than I have in a long time looking at the news, right? We're all painfully aware that there's a rising number of wars in every corner of our planet, in, in Ukraine, in Palestine. There's been bombing in Yemen, new unrest in Haiti, which can't seem to get a break. There's continuing conflicts in places like Myanmar, where the Rohingya are persecuted people, the Uyghurs in China. And there's a provincial election coming up here in British Columbia and an American presidential election. And the noise is going to be exhausting over the next few months as we hear the news. And here at home, the cost of living in Vancouver is crushing. Many of you in this congregation have faced incredible challenges in the last year, losing housing, having a tough time securing a new one. And, and even if we are feeling pretty secure, it's worrisome seeing our friends and, and neighbors struggling just to find a home. And you know, it's really easy to just avoid the downtown east side, drive somewhere else so you don't have to witness the addictions and the mental health and the homelessness. But that's part of our story too that we can't ignore in this city, that's intricately woven into our colonial history and the history of residential schools and colonialism. And I'm deeply grateful, by the way, that some of you attended the Good Friday Stations of the Cross and services in the downtown east side. And I wonder what hope looks like at the corner of Hastings and Maine. And I know for many of us, we have personal struggles too, right? Broken family relationships, aging bodies, difficult diagnoses, family conflict, and sometimes it feels like it's getting worse too. Watching the news, experiencing the rise of social isolation following COVID, what seems like higher rates of violence. It's a lot. And sometimes it feels like it's more than we can bear. And it can be hard to find hope these days. And I want to sit in that heartbreak for a bit because we don't get Easter Sunday and its resurrection without Good Friday and its crucifixion. So I'm not going to engage in toxic positivity here because those challenges we face as individuals and as a collective society are very real. But you know, at Holy Week, that time between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday is all about recognizing that very real pain and heartbreak and violence in our world that the pursuit of power by the few causes so much pain for the many. 
And Easter is when we remember that Jesus was put to death, unjustly arrested and tortured and killed because his message of radical nonviolence and peace threatened those in positions of power. That's literally what we put on the church sign on Burrard Street and on 16th that says, Jesus was killed because his message of peace threatened power. That's what the prime minister saw when he came and visited us on Wednesday. Unfortunately, though, that same message was co-opted by the very people in positions of power who twisted Jesus' message and the Easter story into one of anti-Semitism. And John chapter 20, the reading we just heard, that resurrection passage is one of the places in the Bible where Christians seeking power twisted it so it didn't critique them anymore and instead was used for the pursuit of power and the project of anti-Semitism. Because our scripture reading says the disciples were hiding from fear of the Jews. But remember, Jesus was Jewish. So were the disciples who were hiding. And it was Caesar and those in positions of power put there by Caesar that put Jesus to death. And by the way, Kathy and I received an email this week from someone who saw that sign thanking us saying, I just wanted to mention to you how greatly appreciated the message on the billboards outside of your church were this week. I know that Easter can be a trigger for some Jewish people and the worry that Christians will be revisiting the scriptures that imply that Jesus, the Jews killed Jesus. And your counter message is incredibly powerful to unpack the foundational anti-Semitism and idea uh, and, and to tell the Jewish community that you stand in solidarity as are all the things you are doing to create spaces for bridge building across the divides, the world we all envision has no place for hatred. And Easter is the perfect time to remind us that yes, we live in a world where there is so much hatred, rising incidences of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, of xenophobia and sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, the people who use those things do so so they can raise themselves up in power, right? I always say that the easiest way to make yourself feel better is to make someone else feel worse. And if we're honest, those things don't just come from hateful people. They also are unconsciously present in our culture and even in us. I also want to point out that perhaps the reason... It feels like our world, our country, our city are going to hell in a handbasket and feeling more hateful is because fewer and fewer people are doing what you are all doing today. Attending a faith community, participating in religious community. Did you know that Vancouver is the most secular place in North America? where a whopping 47% of people identify in the Canadian census as having no religion. The closest next city is Seattle at 37%. 10% more have religious affiliation. Vancouver's 47%. And did you know that the moderator of the United Church of Canada used to have the direct line and phone number to the prime minister? Not anymore. But remember... Religion doesn't belong in politics, even though politics belongs in religion. Churches have lost influence and power. And thank God for that. <laughs> because before you thought the sermon was uh, turning into a chastisement for the 47% of people who identify as non-religious and don't attend church, that is the opposite of what I'm trying to say. Thank God the church has lost influence and power because the Christian message had been co-opted by that power. Douglas John Hall, a great Canadian theologian and one of my university professors, wrote about the death of Christendom. At the end of the 20th century, Christianity lost its influence and power. Uh, another historian described Christendom as the union between Christianity and secular power. Something that began in the 4th century, 400 years after Jesus, when the Roman Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity on his deathbed, and Christianity became the official religion, the state religion of the Roman Empire. The same powers and principalities and empire that put Jesus to death co-opted that story for their own power and purposes. 
And so when Douglas John Hall called the end of Christendom, he called it the rebirth of authentic Christianity, the rebirth of authentic spirituality. How lucky are we to live in a time where we don't have to go to church, where we can choose to, if we so desire, where we can seek our own spirituality. And therefore, the resurrection of Jesus can mean what you want it to for you. For some of you, it's the literal resurrection that Jesus was brought back to life because he was the son of God, God's very self, and defeated death's sting. For others of you, the resurrection means that Jesus and the things that he stood for, like love and peace, cannot be put to death. And in fact, trying to stop them is the very thing that makes them spread. So yes, we live in a world where there is much pain and injustice but we also live in a world in which resurrection is happening all around us. The death of Christendom and the rebirth and resurrection of authentic spirituality. And I mean, I'm a bit biased, but I think Canadian Memorial United Church is on the cutting edge of progressive spirituality. So I'm going to invite you to consider this. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And sometimes we struggle to find hope. Sometimes we struggle to feel resurrection around us. And sometimes it's two steps forward and one step back. And right now, I'm willing to bet that some of us feel like we're in a step back right now. But the arc of the moral universe is long, and it is bending towards justice. And in the, love, the end, love will always win. It may take a long time, but love always wins. That's what resurrection really means. That in the end, love always wins. Perhaps not today. Perhaps not in a month or a year, and maybe not even in our lifetime. Perhaps so far into the future that we cannot even conceive it. But in the end, love always wins. It's what Bruce Sanguin, the former minister of this congregation, called evolutionary Christianity. That reminder that we are evolving into something. That we are growing towards the divine. That we are called to participate with God and co-create and co-evolve with them. That we together are God's hands and feet in the world, that we together are the resurrected Christ, that we together will heal this hurting world and continue the project started at creation, the project that Jesus encouraged us on, the project that will continue until God's kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. As the scripture reading tells us today, God has sent someone and so I send you. God has sent Jesus into our midst with a message of love. And now we are sent to share that love with the world. Together, we will resurrect hope. So I want to show you a couple of pictures. One of them is from that great interfaith iftar that we held in our uh, Center for Peace on Wednesday with about 150 people there. I intentionally didn't put a picture of the Prime Minister because that's not what the event was about. It was about bringing Christians, Jews, and Muslims together. And there's Kathy with Haroon and um, uh, Rabbi Laura also spoke at the event. And yes, it's worth a round of applause. <laughs> and then exactly 12 hours after this picture was taken, I was back in the Center for Peace for this. My goddaughter was in a musical theater camp in the Center for Peace all weekend. It was their performance, and they were singing um, songs from The Sound of Music, and there were parents there and children laughing and screaming and singing and dancing. Aren't both those things sign that we are resurrecting hope? So when there is a war half a world away, let's find ways to bring people together and resurrect hope. When there's illness and pain and disease, we will work towards healing of the body, the mind and the spirit and resurrect hope. When someone dies and we are bereaved or see others grieving around us, we'll proclaim the message that love is stronger than death and resurrect hope. When there is catastrophe and calamity in our world, we'll do what Mr. Rogers does and look for the helpers and resurrect hope. And Mr. Rogers, by the way, was a Presbyterian minister before a, a TV host. 
So this day and every day, we are resurrecting hope in our world that is hurting and proclaiming that Christ has risen, that love is stronger than death, that hope is stronger than hate, that peace is possible and is stronger than war. The arc of the moral universe may be long, but together we are bending it towards justice because love always wins. Amen. Let us assume a posture of prayer, whatever that looks like for you, and let us pray. Holy One, eternal living God, you are the creator of magic and mystery. When we're most convinced that life is over and all good has been swept from this world, you come to us anew, rolling away the stones that keep us trapped and oppressed, and calling us to join you once again in the tender majesty of life. You bring us hope and strength in our hands to open doors, hope and creativity in our eyes to see new possibilities, hope and love in our hearts to live in the ways that Jesus taught us. For you are the source of all strength, creativity, love, and hope, even past the point at which all goodness seems lost. In the times when we confront despair that deadens, 
you revive us. When we refuse to bend to injustice, you embolden us. When we are seemingly surrounded by enemies and destruction, you sustain us with your loving presence and eternal peace. Living God, you've told us, peace I leave with you, but the peace you leave is not that of this world. It's not the peace of order when order oppresses the poor. It's not the peace of silence when silence suppresses pain. It's not the peace of resignation when resignation bows to injustice. Instead, your peace is a love for all beings, justice for all beings, truth for all beings, hope for all beings. So on this Holy Easter Sunday, we thank you for this peace you've promised us, and we pray that it might revive, embolden, and sustain us in the year ahead so that we might spread your message and share your peace and hope with the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now if you'll join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And I think we were supposed to sing that, and I apologize. <laughs> Join us in singing our next hymn. seated. So, um, as you all heard, the Prime Minister visited us on Wednesday, March 27th. Now, you all thought it was for an interfaith iftar, and I suppose it was, but it was really because Justin Trudeau heard it was my 40th birthday that day. <laughs> and in my delusional mind, I'm just going to hold on to that, to that thought. But, it, but in all seriousness, what a week. Uh, Monday, Thursday service, Good Friday service, Easter sunrise service, interfaith iftar, you know, my birthday, all kinds of amazing things. Added to that, my home in Toronto has finally sold. <laughs> Only took six months. But it got me thinking about all the things that I'm grateful for. And, and Easter is, yes, about acknowledging the pain in the world and us working together to resurrect hope, but also the, the great things that we are grateful for. And I am so grateful for you, Canadian Memorial United Church. 
This is an amazing place that we get to be part of and get to be a, a family in a lot of ways, a community of faith that goes through good times and hard times. And I get to witness the way that when someone in this congregation is sick, others rally together. I get to witness the ways that we join our advocacy together and affect real change. And I am so deeply grateful. And recognizing that it's not only my 40th birthday, but in a few short months on July 19th, it'll be Kathy Merchant's 40th birthday. <laughs> because we are, are the same age. Remember to respect your elders, though, because I'm a little bit older than you. <laughs> but in gratitude for my house selling for this place, for Kathy and my 40th birthday, I've made the decision to give a $100 bill for each year of me and Kathy, well, my life, 40 years, 40 $100 bills, and I'm going to match every gift up to $4,000 that the congregation makes in the next month before Kathy leaves on a little uh, trip and sabbatical time to do the Camino de Santiago. For every $100 that are made to the church, you can do it on the website. There's a little donate here, and it takes you to Canada Helps. I'm going to donate $100 up to $1,000. So I need 40 people to be willing to give $100 on top of their regular giving in gratitude for all the amazing things that are happening in this place. I'm going to hold on to this because I don't feel I've never carried this much money before in my life. <laughs> and I'm scared to put it in the offering plate. So I'm going to hold on to it and wait to see those matching gifts come in. And every week we're going to do a little update to see if it happens. So consider giving online or, or giving an extra $100 in the plate and make a note that it's for Jeff and Kathy's birthday and your offerings will be received as Kathy does the announcements in a couple seconds. Take it away, Kathy. But he's still older than me. You did hear that part, right? He is older than me. So I'm just saying. So yes, I have a few announcements. So while I'm doing the announcements, the greeters will pass around the offering plates. Thank, thank you so much for that. Uh, again, thank you to everyone who helped this week. We pulled together the, the interfaith iftar with the prime minister in less than 48 hours. So, so thank you. So many thanks to everyone who helped us with that and with the many, many other events we had this week. After that on Wednesday, I saw Jeff the next morning and I said, how are you feeling? He said, well, that's one. We have five more to go this week. So it's been amazing. So thank you to Jeff and to everyone who helped with everything, including super early this morning, making pancakes and eggs and everything. You guys are amazing. I want to let you know the office is closed tomorrow uh, for Holy Monday. So uh, you won't be able to hear from us tomorrow, but later in the week it'll be open again as usual. Uh, on Tuesday, our weekly prayers for Palestine and Israel continue. The Zoom link's on the website. If you can't find it, just email or call me. I can get it to you. And uh, yes, we'd love to have you join us. That's at noon from noon to 1230, if you want to join us for that. Mary Toth. Uh, with our children, youth, and families. She is offering a workshop. Uh, it starts this week, so it's this coming Wednesday and also next Wednesday, so it's a two-part workshop. It's about finding your mission, your three missions in life, and how you can live into your values in the world to help others. Uh, so it's going to be on Wednesday, April 3rd, uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. in the Fireside Room. Uh, the cost for both together is $50. Uh, so if you'd like to sign up, you can either sign up on our website, you can email me, programs at canadianmemorial.org, or you can talk to Mary, and hopefully you can join for that on Wednesday. Uh, the choir is welcoming new members starting this Thursday. You all are amazing today. Thank you so much, and many thanks to Jay and the band. Fantastic. So come join this awesomeness. So they're back here on Thursday at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary, so come join if you'd like. We'd love to have it grow. Uh, and also the Living Your Spiritual Gifts program. Uh, the sign-up continues in the front office. You can also talk to Colleen Cruikshank if you'd like. Uh, so that is going to be have a, a few different parts to it. So the first part will be Saturday, April 6th. So this coming Saturday. And then it's going to include uh, some personal reflection time, some time to have a one-hour interview with Reverend Jeff about um, just what your calling is in this community and in your life. And, uh, and then the next uh, part of the workshop will be on May 4th. So feel free to sign up. That's free. Feel free to sign up if, if you'd like. It's a wonderful program we've done in the past, and we hope 
to have a full group again this year. And finally, starting next Sunday, uh, we're going to do a real theology, real as in R-E-E-L, uh, like film theology sermon series. So uh, we're both going to be preaching on spiritual themes and some of the Oscar-nominated films. So stay tuned for that. We've done our whole peace series, which has been wonderful. And now we're going to switch, kind of mix it up a bit. Next week will be Holy Humor Sunday and uh, reflecting on poor things. So join us for that. And I think those are all my announcements. So thank you so much. And so, friends, I already got the first envelope. Thank you, Jocelyn. As you go forth from this place today, go knowing that you take with you the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah. You take with you the blessing of the Son Jesus born to our sister Mary, and you take with you the blessing of the Holy Spirit that watches over you like a mother hen over her chicks. So go in peace, go in hope, but most of all, go in love. Amen. Sunday.